I thought I'd just uh, give you a little bit of um, background to keep sight, and uh, Judith nicely outlined uh, the fact that uh, that this is an important partnership, as we say, it's you know bringing the eye sector and the diabetes sector together to combine our efforts. Uh, as you know, diabetes uh, is the fastest growing condition in Australia. Another 105,000 people have been uh, diagnosed and, and registered to the National Diabetes Services Scheme in just the past. 12 months and there's now over 1.3 million people registered to the National Diabetes Services Scheme. So the NDSS is a, a key element of KeepSight and what you're going to hear about today. Uh, as you will all know, all people with diabetes are at risk of vision loss and blindness um, and uh, we know though that 98% is of this is preventable with um, uh, good diabetes management, of course, or optimal diabetes management and early detection and treatment. But we do know that about 50% of people with diabetes in Australia don't get uh, their eyes checked according to recommended guidelines. And as you all know, those guidelines have been around for a long time, NH and MRC endorsed guidelines, but about half of all people. So based on the number currently registered, that's over 600,000 people in this country with diabetes who know they've got diabetes who are not getting their eyes checked according to those guidelines. So the advocacy journey for KeepSight commenced really back in 2013 uh, when Diabetes Australia uh, launched uh, an election platform at the time and said we need a national diabetes strategy. Uh, one of the key elements of that uh, call back in 2013 that led to the current national diabetes strategy was we need national complications prevention screening programs. Uh, and the national diabetes strategy recognises that might be individual complication screening or multiple complication screening, uh, but that's what we need. In 2014, we teamed up with the eye sector through Vision 2020 Australia and uh, Professor Peter Van Wingarden is here today, who you'll hear from and others and, and put together a joint advocacy document calling, calling, we call it the National Diabetes Blindness Prevention Program and we started advocating for such a national complication screening. Uh, the, as I said, the National Diabetes Strategy was then released in 2015. In 2017, uh, we still didn't, hadn't got there but we continued to advocate. Um, and uh, we, we then moved on a little bit more and one of the key triggers for that was broadening the, uh, the alliance of interest and in particular two, two key bits. One was that Specsavers uh, came on board as a corporate partner and, pro and offered a million dollars a year uh, and challenged the federal government to match that, said, well, you know, let's have a public-private partnership uh, and match this funding. Uh, and the other thing was that... that um, we became uh, increasingly aware that we had another, in addition to the NDSS database as a great asset in a program like this, we had another great asset which was a system called Oculo uh, and a sharing of information across the eye sector that had been built over a number of years and you're going to hear from, from Alex on the panel who will tell you about Oculo. So it was really about realising that we could have this enormous opportunity to link these existing platforms in a powerful way. And that captured uh, ministerial attention and then last year, uh, fortunately, the government announced through Minister Hunt uh, initial funding of $1 million to match the spec savers $1 million. And then earlier this year, just in fact a few weeks ago in um, uh, National Diabetes Week, we had confirmation of further funding of another $1.5 million for year two. And we have a commitment from uh, Minister Hunt and the government that they'll look to a sustainable funding for this program because importantly this is not a project that's going to just be done and dusted. It's an ongoing complications prevention screening initiative and it needs to go for the next 20 years uh, and, and we'll see powerful outcomes. So this slide sort of shows uh, the principal elements of this and uh, you know, at a funding level, uh, we've you know been calling for this a five-year initial um, funding commitment with a combination of half that funding from the private sector and public. As I said, Specsavers coming to the party with this um, private-public partnership proposal, and you know the great thing about this has been just how united our views have been with um, Vision 2020 Australia, with Optometry Australia. 
as a uh, part of Vision 20, well, not a part, but a key player. Uh, the Royal Australian College of Ophthalmologists and lots of others and other corporate partners now wanting to be part of this. So I think we've you know, built an enormous um, common interest here with lots of people who want to be part of it. So our key objective is to activate um, through marketing and messaging 630,000 people with diabetes um, to uh, better understand their risk. They're the people who aren't getting their eyes checked. The problem is we don't know who those people are at the moment. We know that, that about six, over 600,000 people are either not having eye checks, diabetes eye checks at all, or they're not having them as frequently as required. And, but we don't know who those people are. So through this program we will find out and we will uh, build a system that enables us to be able to report against that over time. This, of course, is what the growing background looks like, that the, national di the registration to the National Diabetes um, Services Scheme continues to grow. And as I said before, we've hit the 1.3 million mark. And the run rate over the past few years has been well, well over 100,000 people per year, uh, over 105,000 in the last 12 months. Um, this just gives you a sense of what consumers say about reminders from Diabetes Australia, and this is important because what we're going to do here is issue reminders uh, to regularly in different ways uh, to people with diabetes around their risk. But you know, a key thing here is Diabetes Australia. Uh, when they hear consumers hear from Diabetes Australia, they see that as um, coming from an organisation that speaks with authority. That it's diabetes to diabetes. It adds trust to the process um, from the optometrist. So often, you know, people may be getting messages, information from the eye sector, from optometrists, um, but this adds trust to that process. Um, so it works Regular at reminders levels. and more information about how to manage their diabetes and how to manage their risk. So we'll utilise the NDSS register, and I should say that. This has been a long-standing call from the diabetes sector and you know, people like Paul Zimmet, Professor Paul Zimmet and others for a long, long time have been saying the National Diabetes Services Scheme database is a national asset and we should be using it more as a health registry and, and doing things with it rather than just an administrative database. And this is the first program where we finally got that imprimatur from government. That's an amazing um, point in time, really because the NDSS has been building as a database for over 30 years. But now, to start using, seeing the NDSS as a much more active tool in improving the health of people with diabetes through programs like this. Um, there'll be opportunity for us to target different audience segments at different times, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, newly diagnosed, people who have had diabetes for more than 10 years, younger people, older people, metro, rural, you know, the opportunities there to target messages at different points in time and of course link that targeting targeted messaging to the local to the local service delivery framework that that's important and that's where partnering with Vision 2020 Australia and Optometry Australia and the eye sector is so important. So I'll finish there and hand over to Peter Van Wingarden just a closing comment is that um, we have one of the powerful things here was to you know, point out to the minister and to government, and we did this over a number of years, that other countries have done pro have implemented um, systematic diabetes eye screening programs in different ways. There's no perfect model here. The UK, Iceland, many other countries, and with great results. And uh, if you look in Australia, diabetes continues to be the leading cause of vision loss and blindness in working age Australians. It shouldn't be so. It's not that way in the United Kingdom anymore because the UK established a diabetes eye screening program over a decade ago. And so that gives us a very clear signal about what's possible here, is to knock diabetes off the perch. It shouldn't be the leading cause of vision loss and blindness in working age Australians. And over the next 10 years, we're looking forward to making that happen. Thank you.